There'll be a Kayan incoming. There shall be a Kayan incoming. Can you guys feel it? What if they give you Lucius instead of Kayan? That's a good idea. That's actually not too bad because right now we have a legend free skill transfer! Let's go! Yo! Is that a Kayan though? I'm not sure if that was red though. Alright, get ready. Get ready guys. Let's go. Never mind, it's a shota. False alarm. Oh! Is this it though? Is it red? I can't tell if it's red color. This is a Kayan. Oh! Yes! Let's go! Alright, as a promise, we're gonna finally do it. After 10 years, I've been waiting for this for the longest time ever. For actually the longest time ever. I'm actually doing it. The moment that all of you guys have been waiting for, and there's 69 of you watching right now, you're gonna watch me do it live. Let's go. Let's go! Are you guys hyped? I mean, wrong unit. Are you guys hype? Let's go! Let's go! Yo! Look at this! Finally! Hey, what is up guys? Guitarok here. Welcome back to another Brave Nine video. Alright, today we're going to be talking about Alec and so far what I think of him. Alright, I've been using him for a couple of days, about 3 to 4 days now. And whatever footage that you saw earlier that was uh, shown, that was still the same Alec that I have right now, which is Alec at plus 11. So for those of you who are not aware, Alec below plus 12 will not have the ability to do direct damage to the enemy yet. Which is why I want to bring the topic of discussion today because um, I know in arena it's quite unpredictable and there's a lot of weird things that can trigger you know, the outcome of the battle in a different variety of different ways for sure. Alright, you can see right here at plus 11, what Alec does is he will deal fixed damage 200% multiplied by the attack and of course heal HP if the enemy dies, right? At plus 12, suddenly this is direct damage as opposed to fixed damage. It's just a huge upgrade, right? And then heals HP if the enemy dies, still the same. So Alec at plus 12, you know, 200%. Of course, if you go to the plus 15, this will become 300%. And the power spike just increases. But here's the thing though. Alec at plus 11, below plus 12, before he get the direct damage. You might say that, okay, direct damage is ideally better. The thing is, with Alec, is so destructive that he can sometimes hurt himself. And I know... If we look at arena battles nowadays, it's so clunky and it's just so weird. There's a lot of things to take into consideration. For example, spell cards, etc. And let's just talk about a few of a few points that might surprise you, or I just find this extremely surprising. All right, number one is versus Jin, right? So Alec, I mean, if you guys saw earlier, my Alec doesn't die to Jin unlike most other Alex, because mine is still plus 11. The thing is, if you have plus 12 and above, it's a very big deterrent for Alex. You know, you have a very big weakness because Jin is everywhere. So therefore, you know, I'm not saying that you shouldn't plus 12 your, or plus 15 your Alex. I'm just saying that it's something to consider because Jin is everywhere. You know, Jin is like the third most used warrior. And also this is something that I've been told by someone from my chat the other day. If your Alec is plus 15, or I mean plus 12 and above direct damage, if you hit a uh, Grand, right? There's a chance that 
the grant will reflect that damage and your Venaka will die. So I've never experienced that yet with my Alec because he's plus 11, he doesn't deal direct damage. So yeah, that's something to keep in mind as well. If your Alec has too much firepower, Grant will end up reflecting that to the point that your Venaka will die because, you know, since Venaka and Alec, they share the damage, it's also something to keep in mind of, I guess. And yes, as you guys can see, Alec plus 12 and above is not without his flaws, right? There's a lot of weaknesses that comes with his strengths, for sure. 3 tile direct damage can be, you know, it's crazy, it's insane, it's a lot of firepower, but then again, sometimes that can backfire, especially, you know, with Charming Siren being everywhere. If you're, if you're not careful, you set up your Alec like exactly at turn 5 or after, that card is going to destroy your formation. Your Alec is going to destroy you, you know, it's not going to be pretty. So it's something they have to be careful. With great power comes great responsibility. I guess that's what they say, right? Okay, so with that being said, I am not going to leave my Alec at plus 11. I think it's... There's always pros and cons when you skill up units for sure. And I do think that for Alex's case, I just have to be extra careful. I just have to pay close attention to the enemy. And I do think that, that um, getting that extra... What is this? Why am I not getting it? Getting the extra direct damage, right? 3 tile direct damage is going to help me in a place like Guild Wars. I'm going to have a much easier time to be able to scout and do more things. So let's go. I will... Wait, how am I doing this? In terms of the companion, you must be wondering. Okay, I've already got two Kayan. I actually have one more right here that I have not yet claimed, which is from the Legend Gift. I purchased this, I think, two to three months ago. So we're just going to buy everything for Kayan, the durable twine. So let's just have a look at Alec at plus 12 and let's see if we notice any difference. I think there's going to be a lot, especially when you're fighting Jin. That's going to be the biggest difference that I can actually notice. So we're going to unlock this, going to enchant and get my Alec up to plus 12. Oh no, is this the hell Gamamone? Yeah, you can see this. I'm going to get destroyed. This Jin will kill my Alec for sure. Boom. Yeah, so Alec plus 11 doesn't suffer, doesn't have this problem. He doesn't suffer from this problem. But Alec plus 12 and above because it's direct damage, so Jin will reflect that back onto you. It's just unfortunate. Okay, in situations like this, it's going to be much better, right? At least I'll be able to take care of that Sigmund. I mean, I can take care of Sigmund regardless because of fixed damage and stuff. Wait, no, I can't, right? I need direct damage to take care of Sigmund. Is there Angelica? Okay, that's interesting. Smacking my Jin twice in a row. Whew. Angelica, why you gotta be so brutal? Alright, pretty cool. So we're gonna take care with Livia. So at least Alec will remove the Mamones first. Energy guard because we have direct damage, right? So that's something that Alec plus 12 can do. And of course, yeah, the pros and cons. Mamone versus Mamone, you get the security because you can deal direct guard and therefore ignore like the energy guard from Mamone's first and second layer. Those can be quite annoying to deal with. Oh my, that's a bane, interesting. Okay, so I'm just gonna face off with that Mamo. Now this brings one more topic to con our conversation, which is what you need complements Alec. Alright, and I think Probably you guys saw the answer right there. Asput is a very good pair with Alec. If somehow there's a Jin, you know, which Alec can't get rid of, you know, at least Asmut is there to take care of Jin. So Jin is a very strong warrior, but since Asmut is a supporter, Jin doesn't counter, you know, a support, right? So it's something that you have to keep in mind, which is why a lot of players, they either build both Alec and Vals, where Alec can't get rid of Jin, but at least you have Vals that can deal with Jin. So you can't just build Alec and go in blind. You have to have like a backup because there's always going to be counters. Like Alec's best counter is Jin right now. Like you have to take that into consideration, take that into account. But besides Esper, we also have Gunter, Rin, you know, because Jin is weak to DOT. And which is why sometimes people still use Seto because of Jin. Yeah, you can place Seto in front, 
and then Jin would hit Seto and die from the DOT or whatever. But the thing is, Seto front is very vulnerable to a lot of other things like, you know, like Alec himself or maybe even Mamone. So it's something that you have to keep into consideration, right? All right, we got a Natus Abuser right here. Uh, yeah, I think this is a triple kill for me easily right there. But it's very important to place your Alec to move at number four. All right, if you are using Alec or any warrior in general, I think some other warriors it doesn't matter as much. But if you have an Alec, you let him move at number five, you are putting yourself in a very weird spot because everyone, everyone is using Charming Siren's card. So you have to keep that in mind. Make sure don't let your Alec get Charm at all. All right, you gotta place him early. That's the best counter. Uh, it's better to, you know, let him be killed by Gangne. At least he still gets his turn to move in a way, right? So I would say that's the best position for Alec right now. Either get let him move at number three or number four. All right, guys. So I think that's gonna be it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching. Now I'll be doing more Alec update videos as the time goes. For now, I'm, I'll just leave him at plus 12 and I'm gonna do Guild Wars later today, I think. If I'll stream, I will be streaming over on Twitch. Make sure you guys come and catch me live right there. And I'll have a collab stream tomorrow with another streamer from Twitch as well. So make sure you guys subscribe, turn on the notifications. Also, I've been doing some random streams occasionally on Discord. So if you guys wanna join, link will be in the description below. Alright, have a nice day. Good. Bye.